Yes, well, I'm Edward Dorman. And I'm Sean Lawrence. And we're our people on music philosophy. Keep it on uh, is uh, it's just a means Africa or African, uh, so it's African music philosophy, and uh, we chose uh, Keep it on because we wanted to, uh, you know, get the proper uh, roots of music back into um, here what we do now in the states. So uh, Keep it on music philosophy just means African music philosophy. In Africa and other traditional uh, societies in the world, when music first started, they had a real uh, explicit and important role within society. It wasn't just an afterthought or just for entertainment. It was narrating your everyday life. When you wake up in the morning, when it's time to go to work, when it's time to celebrate a birth, when it's maybe even time to mourn a death, music, drums was all part of that. And we have noticed that the music is the first step in a lot of the music that we listen to today. So we're just trying to bring more attention and education back to the roots of music. With, uh, with our drums and uh, what we do with our drums, we do workshops, uh, African drum workshops. And what we try to do is not only just teach music, but we try to implement like everyday life skills. So there's a certain discipline that you need when you're playing uh, drums. There's a specific role that you do when you're playing each instrument. Everybody has a, a specific purpose within the music that we're playing. And it's just like in society, everybody has a specific purpose. Everybody needs a certain discipline to get to the next level, whatever it may be in life, you need that discipline. So when you when we do our workshops, we, we make sure we try to take those same attributes what we do in music and put it in everyday life. And that's a lot of the thing that was uh, disconnected um, from us in the continent when we talk about music and the whole transatlantic slave trade and what happened, a lot of that got disconnected. So we really focus in, um, in minorities and um, people of color, and we try to focus on getting them back into that connection. So that is one of the main works that we do, but it's not just inclusive to that. You know, we, we welcome all, because it's all necessary for us to uh, work together to make everyday life better for everyone. My name is Edward Dorman. I'm the first generation uh, American born son of two parents from Jamaica. Uh, they wanted a better, better life for me here. I met uh, this guy when I moved to Tallahassee to go to school in 2009. I met you, right? Mm -hmm. In 2006, I had really gotten into African drumming just because I saw a performance from the Florida African Drum and Dance Festival. Yeah, Florida African Drum and Dance Festival of North Florida. And it just blew my mind. I could hear all of my music training that I've gone through marching band because my band director was Jose Lopez and he played a lot of Spanish music. So then that gave me even another sense of music here in America, so I have Caribbean music, I have Spanish music, I have music of the Americas, and I'm seeing this natural thread, this common thread being wove through all of them. Then I see the African drum and dance, then I learn about in college the cradle of civilization, because you know they don't teach you that in high school. I'm like, okay, all life starts somewhere, all music starts somewhere. There is a transatlantic slave, and I start drawing connections, and I'm just like, okay. This is what I need to study. This is what I need to work in because everybody is getting this part of their art education, but there's another backstory to that that helps bring more color to the whole picture. Um, my name is Sean Lawrence. Um, I'm 31 years old. Um, I am also a first generation American. Um, both of my parents are from a small Caribbean island called Dominica. And no, it's not Dominican Republic. <laughs> um, and they they moved here um, just the same way to you know get a better life uh, in the in America. So uh, me and my siblings, there's four of us, five total. We are first generation American. And um, I started playing drums at the age of seven. Uh, so I was always around music. My dad used to host parties at my uh, at our house for family. He used to DJ. So again, I was always always around music so when i started drumming around uh seven years old i just it just took over me i was drumming in church i started playing um played in middle school high school 
Fast forward, I got to, uh, let's fast forward to 2009 where I moved to Tallahassee to uh, go to TCC and FSU. I met Eddie and when I, when I heard um, African drumming for the first time, actually was uh, right before I moved to Tallahassee, um, it did the same thing to me, it blew my mind. I, was, I felt so far away from that music and, and I remember um, the first person I seen play this movie was, uh, this music was Eric Gore and also became one of our teachers. Uh, he's from the Ivory Coast and when he hit the drum, I was like, I've never heard the djembe sound like that. So I was just, I gotta learn this. So I literally stopped everything. I stopped practicing drum set, drum line stuff. I was like, this is it. So for, I dedicated like my whole life into like, how can I learn this music? You know, I was taking classes. I was, I mean, we were doing four or five classes a week for like four or five years straight, you know, with people from the continent. I was, we were very blessed to have um, people from the continent come to Tallahassee because of the African Caribbean Dance Theater that was there, ACDT. Um, Mr. Marcus was very good about bringing people there. So that's how we just, just, whoop, just overtook me. And um, the rest was just history. When we linked up, it was just, boom, we gotta do this. We have to make sure everybody know that, you know, this music is a, a certain art form, you know. It's classical music from, traditional classical music from Africa. Um, and that's, this is just one part, you know. Everyone just looks at this is West Africa, you know, but there's there's so much, so much more. And, um, and I'm just thankful to be able to share that. All music has technique, it has rules, it has laws. Just like when we're speaking, there's grammar, there's syntax, there's to form the foundations of a sentence. Most times when people interpret music of Africa, they say it like that, music of Africa, like Africa is a country, not a continent with 50 different countries inside of it, a multitude of cultures, over 2,000 different languages. And when you approach the musical styles of Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, when we get even deeper than that of Guinea, Mali, uh, Senegal, uh, Congolese, South Africa, each one of those have their own rule. The same way that Western music has scales, modes, and music theory, African music, drum and dance, all have that same uh, theory. They all have syntax, they all have rules that we have to follow and we just would like more of an importance uh, placed upon it because a lot of times it's kind of rushed or brushed over and it's, it's reflective of the world that we live in and how people are treated. You could see the same disregard for the person going for the music which is the same. We've heard it many times, they want the rhythm but not the blues and the blues is what has the culture and the meat and the soul inside of it, the thing that gives you the goosebumps, that is all the laws within that being followed to the T, creating that experience for all of us to feel connected. We just, that's, I think that's what our main goal is. To any young musician that's like really trying to be a, a, a great musician, not just a good, but a, a really great musician, have to have the appreciation for music outside of the norm, outside of what you would consider the norm. Having uh, that open-mindedness to understanding what is going on, not just in the rhythms, but what's going on in the culture. What, why were these certain rhythms made? Everything is a, is a cause and effect. Everything, every music was created for a certain purpose for you to you know, feel a certain way. And when, once you're in tune with that, you take the music to another level. Once everybody is understanding what where the music is coming from, so I, that's something I, I caught late, you know, and that, that's why I started to dive so much harder because you know I didn't have that piece of information of having that open openness to let me go search out where this music comes from, and it doesn't you know it doesn't matter who you are, what music, what color you are, you have to show that appreciation to where the source of all music comes from and be appreciative that that music is there, and once you understand that and let that you know you know, going to your heart and your soul, on top of what uh, my brother Eddie just said over here, you know, that was gonna make you be <laughs> one of the greatest musicians to, to ever walk because not everybody has that, that thought process when they're, when they're um, becoming a, a musician in their walk. Uh, look for a mentor, uh, never give up 
always uh, believe in yourself because social media, at school, all those different relationships, all those different things that you're going to be feeding yourself mentally is going to have effect on you and you just need to never give up yourself and find someone that you can talk to that's older, like a mentor that can always keep you on the straight and narrow. Someone that can reaffirm who you are and also remind you when you slip up, they can grab you and be like, hey, I know you slipped up, but it's okay. This is who you are. And then that's all that any child needs. Yeah, I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. And I, I think uh, certain cultures or certain communities, some, some households don't like when you know kids ask questions or why they always ask them questions. But don't be afraid to ask questions when you see other musicians or anyone doing that you want to, something that you want to do. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, always ask as much questions as you want because if you don't ask questions, no one's going to know that you have those thoughts in your mind. So whether it be your parents, whether it be your teachers, whether it be anyone you see playing instruments that you want to play, ask those questions. If you see me out in the street, hey, hey, Baba Sean, let me ask you a question. Ask the question and it will be answered. So don't be afraid to speak up and um, say what's on your mind and ask those uh, questions. Yeah, teachers love to answer questions. Yeah. Hey, how are y'all doing? This is the Balafone, B-A-L-A-F-O-N. And this particular one comes from Guinea, West Africa, the Mali Empire. It has 20 keys. It can have 12 keys. It can have six keys. But underneath it, each one of the keys have its own special gourd. A gourd is like a vegetable, like a squash or a pumpkin, and it's hollowed out, and a hole is drilled on the side. And traditionally it was spider's web silk, but now they use uh, cellophane or plastic from like grocery bags to help get the buzzy sound, which I'll demonstrate in a second. The balafone and other uh, pitched melodic instruments outside of the instruments are the the instruments of the jollies, the griots. These instruments over here are called the dunduns, when they're all together like this, which we call ballet style. Traditionally, you'd play each of these instruments on its side like this with a bell on top and <clears throat> with a bell stick and hitting the drum here, all right? This small drum here is called the kinkini. K-E-N-K-E-N-I, kinkini, all right? This middle one here is called the sangba, S-A-N-G-B-A, -A, sangba. This big one here in the middle is called the dundun. All right, a good way we can remember these uh, instruments, a little song that um, we made up here for it, is dundun sangba, kinkini, drum I have here. This goblet shaped drum is called a djembe. D J E M B E. Djembe. There's a goat skin that is soaked and stretched across the top. It's pulled really tight by these ropes on the side and you go up and down and get it to the pitch that you want it to. You tie it off and make a, a knot and it makes three sounds. A bass, a tone, and a slap. Bass, tone, slap. This drum, like the Dune Dunes and the Balafone, come from the Mali Empire. Mali, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, Gambia, and Ghana. This drum is specific to West Africa. It's not the drum of Africa. And again, it makes three sounds, bass, tone, slap.
I'm Eddie Dorman. I'm Sean Lawrence. And we're all Keep It Live Music Philosophy. Thank you for amping it up with us today. Hope you guys enjoyed it.